Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy on the road again. Uh, you know, the other day a friend of mine sent me this note in my DMs on Discord about a newly discovered comet. One that was discovered by a Japanese photographer that was just taking an image of the night sky and when he was processing the images, happened to notice this unnamed comet. So let's have a look at Comet C 2023, Nishimura. So let's go over to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and this is JPL Horizons. When we do a search for JPL Horizons, we come to this page, and we'll just hit the home, and do the small body lookup. So the name of the comet is C2023 P1. And let's do a quick search and see if we find it. And here it is. In order to figure out where to point my telescope, what I need to do is I need to do something called ephemeris. That is the right ascension and the declination that I need to point my telescope in order to see the comet center in my field. So let's go ahead and have a look. So the target body is C2023 Nishimura. Uh, we're going to use my location, which is Whiskey 24. Shamrock Banks Observatory. The time specified is fine because uh, the time that I actually did this observation, so while it was the morning of September 2nd for me, about 5 a.m., it was actually about 9 o'clock UTC. So we'll go ahead and generate our ephemeris. And right here, September 2nd at 9 a.m. UTC, there is our right ascension and our declination. It should be about an, uh, a magnitude 9.7 comet. So I put this into my observatory program at the appointed time and I slew over to the location in the sky. I then plate solve to make sure I'm looking at the right spot and start taking some images. I was able to obtain 41 one-minute images before the sun started coming up and ruining my uh, exposures. Now it was rather challenging taking these images coming just one day after our super blue moon. Super moon because the moon is closest to us in its orbit and as a result is about 14 percent larger than normal and blue because it was the second full moon of the month. The sky was literally lit up almost like daylight uh, and as a result of that my seeing conditions were absolutely horrible. Now just to make it a little more special have a look at the environment that I was taking these images at. It was a hundred percent humidity and I was right at the dew point. The air was really heavy. You could almost cut it with a knife. So I wasn't looking at getting absolutely crystal clear images. I just wanted to be able to see and measure the orbit of the comet and report my findings to the Minor Planet Center. So to do that, I ran my images through Tycho Asteroid Tracker, and here are the results. Now as you can see, here is the animation of the 41 images that I obtained. You can clearly see the comet moving past the star field in the background, and at times you can see not one, but both tails of the comet. The first one goes up at around 1 o'clock, and the second shorter tail is down around 2 o'clock. These are the looped images prepared by Tycho Tracker, and with the crosshairs on the comet, I was able to measure an orbit. So, Shubil, there's the comet as requested, taken with the RASA 11 and the ZWO 6200 monochrome camera, at Shamrock Banks Observatory. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much for stopping by.